Man, I'm riding with Chris Birch. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Hello everyone, it's the AWAS. Well, I'm excited. It's Saturday, April 20th, and I'm heading to Highland Park in Georgia for the Say No to Slow training event with Chris Birch. Yeah, he has a two-day event down here. It's a training event, coaching event, and I've only gone through one adventure motorcycle training course, a local one here, that's run through the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. Uh, basic skills, but this one's gonna be more advanced skills with Chris Birch and uh, really excited about it. I'm gonna be just taping uh, some portions of it and really focusing more on the importance of adventure motorcycle training. What does it mean and what has it done for someone like me who's in adventure motorcycle riding for about two and a half years now and uh, really looking to up my skills so I can attempt more challenging terrain. So I will check back as soon as I get into Highland Park. KTM World at a off-road park called Highland Park in Georgia. I'm gonna actually have a tire change by Chris Birch. I'm very excited about that. Here we go, he's recommending some tires for me to put on the KTM 790 Adventure R. There we go, there's Chris, thanks. That's the, the good old bead breaker. Especially these, uh, these, yes. So off-road, it'd just be a lot of jumping on it. Ah, uh, use the side stand. Like, use your buddy's side stand. Oh, that's right. I saw that video. I go to say hello. Don't, yeah, don't, don't say hello. No, look, don't even look at me. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I nearly had it last time. I nearly had it convinced I was... Oh, there. really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah, they're a little niggly. So let's go up. And those are the same, the eight, do the 890s have the same clutch? So those. The clutch where people put the recluse ones in, or is that the, just a dirt bike thing? There is a. Uh, oh, there's damping rubbers in the back of the basket. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put the recluse ones in because they're. Uh, they're a firmer. Is oh, okay. A, is that a I, thing I, for? Uh... I've not heard that. Okay. The trick is my. Yes. Can I just get that in the right place? Okay. Sometimes they can be a real big boy. There you go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. You want to put this in there? And once it's in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They kind of just hang yeah, out. Yeah, I'll try it. Yeah. yeah. There's the after. It's the Midas E10 versus the Tractionator, Motaz Tractionator Rally. Rally. And, uh, from a quick glance, the blocks are more separated, so I would think it does better in the mud. And they're not as solid. Like, this is really hard rubber, as we know. That's why it lasts so long on the road. These have a little flex to them, I and mean, I can feel the difference. They probably won't last as long, but I can imagine the grip will be much better. You the camp dog, you watching out. Go watch your stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up my camp. No cabins were available, so I'm gonna turn this 
into a bedroom. Actually, I can do this pretty quick. One, two, three. Here it goes, all done. It's a quick pop-up. Time to wake up. This is day one of the Say No to Slow Chris Birch course. It's the intermediate course and I'm very excited. I had a chance to have dinner with Chris last night and the organizer, Mike, and um, just a great job organizing this event. On day one, Chris started us off with step-by-step -step essentials for having your bike set up for off-road adventures. Now, I thought I had my bike set up just right, but I learned some huge lessons that made a big difference in my stability, comfort, and control of the bike. As he walked through the setup, he gave us time to make adjustments on our bike and jumped in to help as well. In fact, he helped me with several bike adjustments teaching me along the way, which really adds value to this hands-on training. We then set off on our training course where Chris coached us, where he started off with a demonstration as we shadowed him, and then he had us do rounds of practice. During our practice sessions and trail riding sessions, he would coach us via one-way comms using the provided Cardo intercoms, which helped us incorporate the training in live scenarios, similar to on-the-job training. Now I have extensive experience coaching and training adults, mainly leadership in the corporate world, so I have context and training when it comes to adult learning. My objective experience in observation is that Chris has a natural gift for coaching adults and is very adaptive to fit the needs of each class. He's also serious about the importance of training as he shared stories of how he prepares for competition. He clearly pulls that experience into this training course and it made me reflect on a few facts when comparing professional athletes to weekend warriors like myself that adventure rides for fun. Now professional athletes train much more than they perform. The ratio could be as high as 90% of their time training to prepare for the 10% of the time they are competing. Well, it's a fair assumption to say that it's the opposite for guys like me. I barely train for adventure riding, and when I head out on solo or on a trip with a group of guys, I'm usually pushing my limits. So you can say that most of my time is spent on performing with little time dedicated to training. Now for a sport as dangerous as adventure motorcycle riding, that's not a good ratio. In fact, after taking the Say No to Slow training with Chris Birch, I realized how much I don't know and learned essential skills that boosted my competence and confidence riding. Reflecting back, I should have taken this course as soon as I bought my KTM versus spending all the money on upgrades like exhaust and other items. I would have saved money on the expensive repairs caused by my newbie mishaps. I can't emphasize enough the value of this course. It's day one of the Say No to Slow course with Chris Birch. It was awesome. What he covered today, I think, is essential for all off-road riders. And I don't care how advanced you are. I think we get into habits riding off-road and you don't realize them until you have a professional like Chris Birch who relies on experience, not only his experience, but as he mentioned today, guys he looks up to. These are world-renowned, world-famous enduro riders. 
and he really pays attention. I notice he seems to be a student coach, right? He's always looking to learn and improve, even though, of course, you know, he's, he's what, top 1% probably of riders. But I'll tell you, a uh, very humble and just a great instructor. He demonstrates it. He has us shadow it. Then we get on our bikes and we do it over and over and over while he's live coaching us. And it's just an awesome experience, I felt. And then after, at the end of the day, we actually hit a trail to test it all. Uh, there are two trails uh, we actually hit to test out the skills. And the biggest noticeable difference for me is I feel like I'm not fighting the bike. Uh, less pressure and stress on my arms and hands. I still have some bad habits that I lean back on, gripping too tight at times when it gets tricky instead of using the core, you know, also injuring my back because of bad posture. So. Uh, just a lot of good skills today, uh, breaking, you know, jumping over logs, just all, all kinds of stuff. And tomorrow he's going to take it to the next level. Great day. Really recommend this. I'll check in at the end of the day tomorrow and uh, after some footage and we'll go from there. I gave you beef jerky and now you're just hanging out, huh? Hey, yep, that's right. Okay. Well, I got to go soon. Day two. Uh, I, you know, turn off the bike. Here's Chris showing us how to do it. Yeah. He's a good rider. It's a big bike. That wheel takes up that whole space, so it's it's definitely a bigger challenge for, for him on that bike. This is great, you just follow the pros line. I'm riding with Chris Birch, my birthday. Dang. Yeah, let me tell you, this training, my, I, I mean, I thought I was taking a lot of pressure off my hands, but not after his training. I realized I'm not using my core enough, I'm not using my legs, I'm not um, pinching in or holding onto the bike with my legs as I should, and legs meaning, both, you know, with knees, also your ankles. I'm trying to jump a little. Oh, shit. Slow. <laughs> got a confession tonight. I can't remember where to go. <laughs> hey, how did you do? Go like hey, Mark. Shot for the camera. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I mean, listen, I'm not out here. It says, you know, don't go slow. <laughs> It's all, it's all your fault, Chris. <laughs> well, you can say no to slow, but sometimes you still need to go slow. <laughs> say no to soggy. 
<laughs> Say no to soggy. Hey, it's a good look. Is he gonna tell us when or just go? <laughs> just go. All right, here we go. Oh man, that was awesome. I've heard like <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Why don't you, you should get Chris in there. Okay. Anyone got a pump? <laughs> okay.
All right, let's do that in third gear now. So day two was coming to an end, and although we were a bit tired, we all felt a sense of achievement. We successfully climbed a steep off-camber hill climb several times, and also practiced riding on a narrow off-camber trail with slippery pine straw and a deep rut. We turned our mistakes into learning lessons thanks to Chris's help, like how to get yourself out of a rut, no pun intended. I didn't want the training to end and tried to be fully present the last several miles of this ride. I was just thinking, do I want to go that way? And he went. Yeah. And this looks deep. This one's what? Isn't this the one we did earlier? Yeah. It's not that we just got to hit it, you know? Yeah. Hit it straight. I wonder if the one on the left is better. No, well, the bushes are right there. Yeah, for same me. thing with this side, otherwise I'd just squeeze this side. Yeah. And if you were taking your time and you were worried about it, you could just trim some branches. <laughs> if you just go come to a stop and apply pull back down the side, you've got a big problem. So your goal is to get the pull, have it lean that way, lay foot on the ground, sort yourself out from there. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. This video and what I shared is my true experience-based testimony. I paid full price for the course and made this video as an honest testimony to what I felt was a top-in-class training event. I'd rate it 5 out of 5 stars and it delivered beyond my expectations. For example, I didn't expect Chris to be as involved in helping us with our bike setup. He's also humble and does not claim to be a master know-it-all. Now this is powerful because his mindset is focused on always learning to improve and find better ways. In my opinion, the very best have this mindset. They don't declare themselves to be experts or a master at their craft, because declaring to be a master is declaring that you have nothing else to learn, which could lead to stagnation. Declaring to be a learner, however, especially when you have extensive knowledge in your craft, those are the coaches I seek because they are focused on continual improvement. That's how perceived unbreakable records are broken by coaches and athletes believing there is always a new learning or a better way. I was happy to see that Chris embraced this mindset and the class benefited from it. So in summary, who do I believe should take this course? Well, if you've been adventure or off-road riding for a short period of time or for a few years, then do yourself a favor and learn from my mistakes. Take this course as soon as you buy your first ADV or off-road motorcycle. First and foremost, you'll become a safer rider because this is a dangerous sport with a high likelihood of injury. This alone is worth it. Secondarily, you might save yourself from costly repairs due to avoidable crashes or not having your bike set up correctly. For example, I spent 800 bucks on a repair from a mistake that I made due to improper bike setup and bad eye positioning, for example. I would have likely avoided it if I took this course beforehand. Advanced riders, you also have an option where Chris takes the training to the next level. I hope to take this course next year on Chris's 2024 U.S. Coaching Tour. I'm willing to bet you will learn from someone who has competed in the Dakar Rally, won the New Zealand Enduro Overall Championship eight times, won the Roof of Africa race three times. He's also been on the podium seven times at the Red Bull Romaniacs, including winning it in 2010. And he's also competed successfully in the world's biggest Enduro races like Erzberg, Red Bull Last Man Standing, Hell's Gate, and many others. He's ridden and raced in over 30 countries and clearly has a thirst and passion for adventure. Now I've included links where you could access the dates 
and information about his upcoming 2023 uh, coaching events in Virginia in July and also in Utah in September. I highly suggest if you have the time, sign up for this. It's worth the time. You'll come out a better rider as a result. And you'll have a cool time riding with Chris Birch. Hope you enjoyed this video.